Dr. Machino, cancer runs in my family, and I was wondering if there's something that I could take now to prevent me from getting cancer later on down the road. You know, the evidence is very strong that most cancers stem from faulty dietary and lifestyle patterns, not from genetic inheritance. In fact, in a recent study in pharmacology research in 2008, you see documented evidence there that 90 to 95 percent of cancer is actually caused by faulty dietary, lifestyle, and environmental factors that only 5 to 10 percent of cancers are due to heredity. So even when cancer runs into a family, very often it's like you, you sort of inherited a gene that makes you vulnerable. It's like the loaded gun that you carry around with you. But it's often environmental factors and stress and faulty dietary behaviors that actually pull the trigger. So if you can keep those things positive, you can suppress those genes from ever expressing themselves. That seems to be what we're starting to learn. So people who come from families where there's a strong family history of cancer need to be really vigilant using anti-cancer preventive strategies, the ones I'm going to outline right now. So the scientific evidence best supports the following things. With respect to diet, there are 10 things I want you to know. Number one, avoid high fat meat and dairy products and also deep fried foods and be careful with too many pastries and rich desserts because those kinds of fats create an environment in the body that encourages cancer to develop and also it acts like fertilizer to encourage those cancer cells to grow if they get any traction at all. So you want to try to minimize that. Strategy number two, you want to increase fruit and vegetables five to seven servings a day. Some studies show that may reduce your risk by up to 50 percent. And make sure one of the vegetables is a cruciferous vegetable. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, bok choy, turnips. That's strategy number three because those vegetables contain uh, these special ingredients like the indole 3 carbon, all in sulforaphanes that have tremendous anti-cancer properties. Step number four, limit your alcohol intake to three drinks a week or less. After cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption is the second leading cause of cancer if you look at all environmental causes. A lot of people don't realize that. Step number five, keep your fasting blood sugar below five millimoles per liter, which is also 90 milligrams per deciliter. To do that, you need lower glycemic foods. Watch the starches and the really sweet things. Keep that blood sugar down because that helps to prevent cancer. And uh, number six, eat legumes every day, either peas or beans or soybeans, because they have great anti-cancer properties. And so do tomato products, which is step seven. Try to have a tomato product at least three to four times a week. Tomatoes contain lycopene, a carotene that has amazing anti-cancer properties. Step number eight, four ounces of pomegranate juice daily, especially to reduce risk of breast and prostate cancer, it seems. Step number nine, get enough fiber in your diet, especially from whole grains that help to reduce the risk of colon cancer, which is the second leading cause of cancer death. And step number 10, is two heaping tablespoons a day of ground flaxseed into a shake, into a juice, and sprinkled onto some cereal. Amazing anti-cancer uh, properties of ground flaxseed. Now there's some other dietary and lifestyle factors that are important here as well, like don't smoke, uh, avoid other carcinogens like nitrates that you would find in certain foods, don't eat smoked food or smoked fish, no smoked meats and so on because they contain benzopyrene. At least try to minimize your intake of those things. Same with charred foods and things like pan-fried meats. They contain heterocyclic amines that also produce, that, cause, that are uh, mutagens. They cause genetic damage to your cells. They can lead to cancer. Be careful you don't live in a home where there's radon gas. Be aware of secondhand smoke around you and some other obvious things. But also endurance exercise, four to six times a week for 30 to 45 minutes, helps you stay leaner. That'll reduce your cancer risk and also helps to detoxify carcinogens more effectively. People who exercise more so tend to have less cancer if they do it in a moderate way like this. Finally, there are four supplements that I really think everyone should take. A high potency multiple vitamin is the first one. With the exact dosages that I have on the screen, so boosted levels of antioxidants and B vitamins, extra calcium, extra vitamin D, bioflavonoids, carotenes. These things work synergistically to help protect your cells and maximize your defense. The second supplement is an essential fatty acid supplement that's a combination of flax seed oil with borage seed oil with fish oil. Those three together help the, the body make hormones that reduce inflammation and slow down the rate of cell division. When you slow down the rate at which cells divide, you reduce the likelihood that cancer will develop. 
That's why I also take a natural anti-inflammatory that contains curcumin, ginger, white willow bark extract, and boswellia because those anti-inflammatory herbs also are anti-inflammatory and they slow down the rate at which cells divide linked to a reduction in risk of cancer. And that's why you would be taking extra vitamin D today. You know that vitamin D reduces the risk of cancer. How does it do that? Slows down the rate of cell division, also helps cells really mature or become more differentiated, as we say, and they're, they're, they're uh, more resistant to cancerous changes. So most people need 1,000 to 4,000 IUs of vitamin D a day to get their blood level into the ideal range. And what is the ideal range? Above 80 nanomoles per liter. So at what age should you adopt these anti-cancer lifestyle strategies? Well, many cancers actually begin in the teenage years and, in, and during someone's 20s. And that's because that's when they're growing. It's rapid cell division. Cells are dividing faster. They make genetic mistakes more easily that can lead to the initiation of cancer. And then those cancer cells lie dormant for many years, and then they start to grow later in life, especially if there's a high-fat diet, a lot of alcohol, the person's overweight, they don't exercise, not enough cruciferous vegetables. The truth is that uh, young people have the greatest opportunity to prevent future cancers by protecting, their cells at a young, protecting themselves at a young age. So using the strategies that I outlined here is, are especially important uh, to a person who has cancer that's already uh, part of their family history. So the earlier in life you implement these changes, the better. So I hope you found this helpful. I'm Dr. James Machino. Thanks so much for watching.